Decibels and beats are two unique qualities of sound waves that are not shared with light waves. A decibel is what you've probably encountered as a measure of the loudness of a sound. And decibels are measured by comparing the intensity of the sound to some reference or baseline intensity, which is usually depicted as I naught. And so when you're looking at decibels, you have to realize that decibels are calculated using the formula 10 times the logarithm of the intensity of that sound over the reference intensity. Realize that whenever you're working with logarithms, an increase in a logarithm of one means a tenfold change. But because we're using 10 times the logarithm, instead, an increase of 10 decibels means a tenfold change in that. So if something is 10 decibels, it is going to be 10 times as great as the reference intensity. Whereas if it's 20 decibels, it's going to be 10 times 10 times as great. So it's going to be 100 times as great. So just realize that a 10 decibel increase means a tenfold change, and 20 decibels means 100, and so on. The best way to think of this, and this is something that a student taught me, is that if you look at this first number, that tells you how many zeros are going to be following that one. So if it's 20 decibels, you have two zeros. If it's 30 decibels, you have three zeros. And so if you're trying to figure out what a difference of some number of decibels means, just look at that first number and realize that that's what you basically add. That's how many zeros follow the one when you're examining decibels. And that way you can realize that if something is 40 decibels apart, then it's going to be a one with four zeros or 10,000 times as intense as the reference sound intensity. Beats are another phenomenon that will be exhibited by sound waves, uh, in particular because of their longitudinal nature. What a beat is, is it's a change in interference pattern from constructive to destructive interference, or vice versa. And this occurs when you have two waves going at the same time. If they're in phase, they will exhibit constructive interference, and that will increase the sound that you hear. Whereas if they're in destructive interference patterns, that will have the effect of dampening the waveform overall. And you may be familiar with this if you've ever tuned a guitar or if you played two slightly different tuning forks at the same time. It kind of makes a wow, 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 wow sound. And that is the change from constructive interference, where it's getting quite loud, to destructive interference, where it's getting quite damp. It's dampening the sound overall. Now the way to calculate beats is simply by looking at the difference in frequency between the two waveforms. So if they differ perhaps by two hertz, then you'll hear a beat two times every second. And so you'll hear that oscillating sound twice every second. And that will also be very visible if you're looking at the graph of the waveform there. So all you really need to know for beats is just how to calculate them and what they mean. The calculation is simple. You're just looking at the difference in hertz of the two frequencies. And you need to know that the thing that causes beats to be audible is that when they are in phase, they have constructive interference, and so the sound comes out louder. Whereas when they're out of phase, they're sort of fighting each other and dampening that sound, and so it comes out as a much quieter sound overall.